You may not be familiar with Wise Watches. They are a micro brand from Thailand. And over the last couple of years, they've established themselves as a premium micro brand, producing original looking watches with some interesting movements and materials to incredible standards. A couple of years ago, I reviewed their original Hitman 200 meter diver and I liked it very, very much. They've just sent me one of their more recent releases, a fully loomed dial version of the Hitman Diver. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this Hitman. Now, before I run through all the reasons why I think Wise is a premium micro brand, I'm going to ask you guys to do me and the channel a solid by subscribing. Maybe hit that bell notifications icon as well. And like this video if you enjoy my content. Um, yeah, that would be smashing. Right. Wise, what is the difference between a micro brand and a premium micro brand? Well, it's not just one thing, it's lots of little things. And um, I've already unboxed this watch on my second channel. I like watches too. Feel free to head over there after you've finished watching this video and subscribe to that channel as well. Um, yeah, so I've unboxed it already and I forgot to show you something in that unboxing. Here we go. Let me just take out this box. I mean, the packaging is one thing I think that helps to establish um, a premium brand over um, just a normal brand. This box feels very heavy and beautifully made. I don't know what the material is, but um, it doesn't feel like cheap cardboard. And then under here, you will see um, a little compartment um, housing a metal warranty card, a couple of tools and some extra links when they provide you or supply you with the watch. They don't put all the links on it. Um, it's sort of set up for an average sized wrist, which I think is a nice little touch. So um, yeah, the packaging does seem to, well, feel and look fairly premium. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Now, I know you're not here to see the Wise packaging. You're here to see this watch, the Wise Hitman Loom Special Edition. Now, despite it being a special edition, not a limited edition, it's a special edition. So basically a newer version of a watch that they've already made with something special about it, which is um, the fully loomed dial, which obviously I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, yeah, they've also numbered it. Um, this is number 2000 and something, I think, which is a nice touch, despite it not being a limited edition. I think people like the originality of having a sort of one of one, even though it's not a one of one. Um, the number on the back makes it a unique watch, doesn't it? So, um, yeah, I like that. Nice touch. And it's little things like that that make um, a brand like this, in my opinion anyway, um, become a premium brand. Now, one of the main reasons why I think this brand has established themselves as a fairly premium micro brand is um, the finishing, the build quality. Um, they do seem to focus on, in particular, the steel finishing, which... If you're familiar with my channels, you know I am particularly interested in. Um, I love watches that are finished to an incredible standard, which is one of the reasons why I love Grand Seiko watches. And if you watch other reviews of Wise watches, um, not just, you know, you can watch other channels, guys. You don't just have to watch my reviews. If you watch other reviews of their watches, you will see other reviewers saying a very similar thing, that the steel finishing is incredible and um, they often use different materials like 904L stainless steel not just 316. Um, this is 316L stainless steel it's a 200 meter diver I wouldn't expect them to use anything else but um, yeah they use interesting movements um, different steels um, beautiful ceramic bezel inserts the bezel action on this watch is incredible and again that's just another small indication that this is a premium brand and um, the alignment is is perfect. The clicks are super crisp. Um, they remind me very much of the Phoebus PY007C that I had, um, which had probably the best bezel action I have ever experienced. Um, let me put this closer to the mic so you can have a listen. And there's something else this brand offers which helps to elevate it above other micro brands. And that is when you order this watch, you can essentially, well, personalize it to some degree. You can choose to have the crown on the right or the left. You can have a matte or a shiny bezel insert. You can change the color of the insert. You can change the color of the second hand as well. And you can also choose from a couple of different types of loom on the dial. Um, so yeah, you really can choose the wise Hitman watch that you want. Um, and with the older version, you had different colored dials as well. So 
Um, yeah, I like the fact that they offer that flexibility. They've also selected a no date movement for this no date dialed diver, the NH38. Now I know when you're looking at the prices, um, for some micro brands, I think you would expect a Miota 9039, but as I've already mentioned a couple of times, this brand is trying or has established itself as a premium micro brand. So they're offering this watch for $440 with an NH38, a no date version of the NH35, beating at 21,600 beats per hour. Hacks and hand winds, no ghost position on the crown. It's a solid movement, isn't it? Um, we're not going to complain about the NH35. I suspect there's a few people out there that would prefer to have a higher beat 9000 series Miota movement in this watch for the money, but they are offering $35 off at the moment with a discount code. I'll put all the details in my video description. And the watch, by the way, was sent to me for free. I don't charge for my reviews. So when you see the includes paid promotion icon in the top left hand corner, that is just to indicate that I've been sent a free watch. Right, before I run through some of the specifications, I just want to show you the case back just to give you another example of the premium finishing because the case back has a mix of brushed and polished finishing, which in itself isn't that rare. Um, but the way they've done it is definitely a little bit different. They've added a sort of polished um, circle around or towards the outside. And the transitions between the brushed sections and the polished sections look incredible. Um, you would think perhaps a brand, a micro brand might save a few quid and, you know, not stipulate that the finishing has to be as tidy on the case back because after all it is the case back. But no, no, um, the finishing of that case back is, well, it's incredible. So if it's that good on the case back, you can only imagine um, how good it is on the case and the bracelet. And it is very, very good. The polished surfaces, not many of them because it's a tool watch, um, but there is a polished chamfered edge running the length of the case. Look, very bright, very crisp. Transitions are fantastic. The brushing is a beautifully fine satin brushing, um, longitudinal brushing on top of the watch. Um, runs down the side of the case as well. Um, fully brushed bracelet look. No polished surfaces on the links. I'm just smudgy prints look. A little bit of a polished chamfered edge on the outer shell. Um, that is probably the only part of this watch which doesn't feel very, very premium. The outer shell is just a fairly simple sort of pressed outer shell. Double pushes, um, no safety latch. It's signed and beautifully finished. Three micro adjusts which is all you need, um, but you've got very nicely, um, well, no, I haven't taken all the plastic off, look. Very nicely um, brushed and finished inner elements, which appear to be milled. Um, so yeah, the clasp is nice. It's just that outer shell is probably the one thing that just doesn't quite hold up to the rest of the watch. Um, the screw pins are nice, solid end links, solid links, a fairly standard three link tapering bracelet look. Female end links as well. Um, I'll put the dimensions and the weight in the bottom right hand corner when I pop the watch on my wrist, um, the end links marry up to the case very, very nicely. No movement at all. Obviously they look like they've been made for this watch because, well, this case I should say, because they have. The bezel they've sent me is a black bezel and it's polished look and it's beautifully bright. Um, the print or the font on the bezel, the markers really, really crisp as well. And if I zoom into the dial, you can see that the incredible finishing um, carries on when it comes to the hands and those applied markers, fairly deep markers, aren't they? I suspect the loom on this watch is gonna be pretty good. And um, not just the loom on the dial, but the loom on those markers because they seem to sit fairly high off the dial. I mean, even the sides of those markers look to be nicely polished and, um, yeah, they're really deep and crisp, aren't they? The hands as well, beautifully polished. The finishing really is exceptional on this watch. Right, I think we need to have a look at the loom, don't we? I am going to do a loom degradation test at the end of the video, but with this being a fully loomed, dialed watch, um, I think we should just have a look at the loom. Well, it looks like it's going to be a fairly impressive loom display. Um, you've got loom on loom on loom by the looks of it. You've got loom in the bezel insert. Um, yep, you've got a fully loomed dial. There is some loom on the hands as well. Those hands aren't fully skeletonized. Um, there is a skeletonized element to them towards the center of the dial, but you've also got loom on the hands 
and loom filled into the applied indices. And this is, as you can see, the blue BGW9 version, but it's so bright, it almost looks like a white loom, doesn't it? And you can have old radium, I believe. Um, but this is the option I would have chosen. They selected this watch to show me, and I'm not complaining because I love divers with white dials and black shiny bezel inserts. Um, so yeah, perhaps they're watching my channel and they know what I like, but they pretty much sent me the watch I would have chosen. Right, we'll test the loom at the end to see how well it lasts. But yeah, I suspect it's going to last pretty well. There looks to be a lot of loom on it. And even in this bright light box um the dial now looks like a pale baby blue doesn't it <laughs> incredible right have i left out any specifications well it's a diver 200 meters screw down crown um screw down case back signed crown um details on the case back i'll show you those um signed clasp as well 120 click unidirectional bezel is there anything else i've forgotten i don't think there is i think i've covered it all right let's get it on the wrist Right, here it is then on my roughly average sized wrist. And um, yeah, I just gave the loom a little extra boost to see how well it stood out even in this light box. And look at the dial. It looks like a very pale baby blue color, doesn't it? Um, that's pretty impressive. Um, yeah, very comfortable. It's not the broadest bracelet, which is fine by me. I'm not a massive fan of really broad bracelets. What that does mean, though, is um, there's not a huge amount of weight towards the underside of your wrist. Um, so I wouldn't say it feels top heavy, but I wouldn't say the weight distribution all the way around my wrist feels completely even. So it's not gonna wobble around on top of your wrist. I mean, it feels very secure. Um, the bracelet is definitely broad enough. Um, it's just quite narrow, which I like. Um, I do prefer more narrow clasps and buckles and bracelets, um, but yeah, it's not the smallest dive watch. So. Um, yeah, not top heavy, but um, not perfectly evenly weighted all the way around my wrist. Love the look of this watch. Um, good size, good proportions. Um, yeah, attractive original piece, isn't it? Beautifully finished. All right, guys, let me know what you think in the comments section.